It's really a privilege to be today and to share about this perspective for discipleship. In my daily involvement in ministry, I'm more involved with counseling, pastoral care, and spiritual development. But to be honest, through this, I saw that talking about evangelism and now especially about discipleship, we have to remember that this is not only skills, but it's our character who shape the people. And today I would like to have this focus on character. How, and it will be a little bit about us, how our character can influence people and how we can be developed, transform, and through this we will be able to influence people. You know probably the phrase that people, when they are looking for a job, they receive the job because of skills, but often they are fired because of character. Two very important things, and I think talking also Christian ministry, all the time we like to develop people with skills. We like to recognize our gifts, but how today in the morning we heard calling, this is even more important. And today we would like to have this perspective how our character will influence other people also how we as a leader, how we can develop ourselves, and then how we will see also the process in discipleship making new generation people, that they will be, this is our prayer, on the likeness of Christ. So I think in different um, dictionaries, we have different also definition of character. What is character is? This is one of Many, many, many. And I think all of us, we have also our own definition, what is character. But we will not now discuss about, yes, the attribute likeness, but in the same time, talking about character, we like to have first the focus and our perspective for God's character. So when I will ask you, what is God's character? To be honest, because God is without limits. I think if we start to talk about his character, this characteristic will be also without limits. And I think we have also our own perspective because it's depend, thank you. So this is just only few, I'm sorry. I was sure that it will be like, you know, 20, 20, 20 and more, but yes, you are very, shine, so this is my stress today, so don't be stressed, you know, so. <laughs> but yes, they are only few characteristics or name, how we can call who is God. God's character, God's heart. And this is what we would like to do. We like to think about really who is God. And if, I can say this is like one short definition which I like very much. God's character is the highest integrity. He's perfect in every way. He will always do the right things. He's holy, truthful, righteous, just this character is true form. I think it's really difficult to name everything because the Almighty God is just without limits, and also in his character, he's without limits. Yesterday, the focus was on the love. And I think this is one of the most wonderful things when I think about God. He loves me. He loves me, and he's full of love for me. We need to allow the truth about him and about his character to transform us. So if I will think about God's character, so this is also the way how I receive an invitation, be like me, look at me. Because we are sons and daughters, so we have the privilege, like just in the family, often you, you those of you who have children, sometimes you can hear that, oh, this is exactly like mommy. This, this child is exactly like daddy. When my kids were small, 
Nobody told me they are like mommy. Oh, this is small Mirek. All the time it was my husband's name. All of them, they were like daddy. Now I hope they are also, I see some similarities. So, but this is in the same time an invitation for us. God has a wonderful character. And we receive the invitation, be like me. So in some, we have a wonderful testimony about, and then in Acts, about David. David shaped them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands, he led them. And then about David, we got testified, I have found David, the son of Yes, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. So having a picture of God's character, it was the life of David, but also this invitation for us to be more like him, to just look at God, to understand, to discover his character, because we are invited to be similar to him. And when we start to look in the Bible and we know all these stories from different Christians, people's life, we see how those people who met Christ, how their life was changed. And this is also probably, if I will ask you how many examples we have in the Bible. I think the best example is Paul, yes? Who was one day, he was the, the most crazy man against Christian in this moment, yes? Young disciples, young followers. And then the same man, after this moment when he met Christ, he has almost a different personality. We will talk later that his character and the way how he has discipled people, it was his mother and father. So for those places where his character was like the most dangerous person, this man, not only wise, but full of love, grace. And uh, probably we will have many this kind of examples in the Bible, but also in our life. Maybe if I will ask you about your testimony, you will tell me also that your life before you met Christ, it was very different. You was a different person. Now you are in this change, in this stage where you see how God influenced you. So making disciples of Christ is not only about equipping people, but this is also with certain skills or training them for evangelism and then calling new disciples. But this is rather transformation on one's character into Jesus Christ. Transformation. So when we talk about discipleship, this is not only that we like to help people to understand the gospel, to understand the calling, but this is also about our insight. This is about transformation for our character to Christ's character. This is about assisting and enabling others to open up to the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit who can only change and transform us into Christ likeness. This is impossible that having a friend whom I would like to disciple, I will give him a list and I will say, okay, they are good opportunities for you. I would like that you will be like this, 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 and this. This is the role of the Holy Spirit. And we have the privilege that when we are working with people, this is not just our miracle touch, but this is just an invitation. Holy Spirit, you are here. And only in your name, Jesus Christ, being open for the Holy Spirit, we like to transform us. And then 
we will be able to transform other people. I think the biggest sometimes challenge, and I will say also danger, in our Christian evangelical cycles is that we know a lot about the gospel, about Bible, about all theological subjects. And we just can say everything about everything. It's okay, I would like to develop myself. I would like to know more. I would like to know more about apologetic theology, everything. I, I'm really, even when I think about all of you with your knowledge, with your experience, so, so I'm very humble now to stay here. But I think the most important for us is not only to have good knowledge, not only to know how to answer, not only to just train people with five steps to do, but this is our life. And this is what I would like to do, that today we will see. I know that you know this, but this is only encouragement. To think in this way that we can influence people through our insight. And if, if, until Christ is formed in me. So I think this is like the, the whole understanding. If this is my priority from my life, so then I have the access also to go to people to say, I would like to take you also to this place. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm doing mistakes. My, act, my character is still in development, but this is my main calling. This is my main prey. This is my main focus for my life. Until Christ is formed in you, in me. And if this is my attitude, so I can say, okay, let's talk about the discipleship. How I can really be discipleship maker, how I can lead, how I can influence, how I can teach. Because in this moment, the perspective will be very different. I would like now to ask you to discuss a few questions. The question is here, and I will ask you, yes, it's very easy for us sitting together with in small groups that we will discuss this for a few minutes, which day we will make a decision when you will finish. But uh, maybe not all, all this question you will be able to go through, but just the main idea, which traits of character are the most important to me? Thinking about God. Thinking about God. Because I think you know that often it depends in which place, which situation, in our life we are. Sometimes we are discovering God is my security. Because this is exactly the moment I need this. So today I was focused on this. God is my security. Maybe you are in a different place. So which traits of character are most important for you? Each of my experience of study the word of God have shown me the character of God's, car, uh, God's heart. Yes, I love this when we talk about God and we are passionate about yes. this. So this is not only good ordinary God who is, has authority and focus on something. No, this is God of love, of spontaneity. And just, I think we can be in the same way. And now our Next point, so I'm sorry we don't have time now to discuss this, what you discovered, what you shared, but I think it was enough good time for you. So how we ourselves are transformed in our character. Interesting enough that, uh, slide please, that disciples, apostles, with Jesus they were three years. But if you remember, so even in the last night, they asked Jesus, show us the Father. 
they didn't understand the character of God, of Father. And Jesus just responded them, he who has seen me in has seen the Father. So Jesus perfectly reflects the character of God. Jesus perfectly reflects the character of God. And observing Jesus in the, gal in the gospel, we see that the way Jesus treats people in the same way God treats us. <clears throat> in the same, Jesus has the attitude towards people, is also God's toward us. So how the disciples discovered God's character and how they were using and understanding who God is. You remember probably very well, and even I think uh, yesterday, the, the f or first day, we started in the, in the, with the image when Jesus, during the last evening, started to wash the disciples' feet. And how it will be if we are one of twelves, and Jesus is now sitting with us. And he's coming. And he's on the knee. And he takes your shoes. He touched you. And this is what he has done with disciples. He's doing this for you, for me. I think this picture we don't we know so well. But if I will put myself now in disciples' shoes, foot, and I will use my feet, and I will be open for this that Jesus will touch me. Not standing from a distance, but being on the knee. I have to tell you that when I was preparing this, it was one of the most touchable moments for me to think what Jesus has done for me. And this is like in the package. This is not only the cross, which is the most important, and this is the sense of my belief, but they are also this different way how he expressed himself and his character. I will say this again. We know so much about the gospel. We know so much about what Jesus had done. But I think the most important is to think, to think and really to reflect of this, what he has done for me his love, his humbleness, his attention, his focus on me. If we, we will live in this way, that we will be more focused on this, what he has done for me, not only with our knowledge, but really with all my insight, my daily reflection, It will be also the reason to live in joy, to live with understanding what is my calling, but it will be also, I think, the very important thing to have the identity also. Who am I? I'm the daughter of my beloved God, and I'm here his beloved daughter. You are his beloved son. You are not like one of millions, but this is you. This is you. It's me. Sometimes I think our tendency is to think, okay, we are part of a group. Yes, we are. But God is really focusing and just is looking only on you. This is like, you know, when you have small kids. It was again my experience as a mom. 
when I was talking with my kids often, especially the youngest son, Timothy, wherever he wanted to communicate something to me, it was, mommy, and I have just, you know, his hands come to me, mommy, look at me, listen to me. Yes, they need the focus. And this is the way how also Jesus, God, how he's talking to us, how he's coming to us. So disciples, they have the wonderful experience to be with Christ and Jesus has really served them. But we are talking about discipleship, how to disciple maker, God can develop us, but also whom God is using. So the disciple maker whom God is using choose to serve in attitude and action and is secure enough to empower others. One of the very important characteristics for us, we, we will be able to develop our other people if we will be, have also the security and an identity in Christ. I'm not able to, to influence, to, to develop, to empower other people is all the time I will be not secure about myself. Who am I? And in fact, my whole ministry, it will be only people, I have something to say. People, I can do something. And in fact, all my focus, it will be only me, 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 me. I need attention. I need that someone will told me it was wonderful. I need all the time that sometimes people will say to me, you are a wonderful leader, and it will be all what I need. No. God is using people who are enough secure in him that my value, my security, this is in Jesus. So going back to, to this picture with Jesus, so I think you will understand the leader, secure leader, is focused on towel. You know probably this paraphrase, this is really to be ready to love, to serve. So I'm not, me as a leader, I'm not the main person here in this situation, but this is the towel. This is the way how li I like to serve to people. So this is what Jesus has done. He was not saying, people, disciples, now look at me. I'm the big guy and look what I'm doing. It was just without anything. He was on the knee and he started to wash the dirty, dirty feet. Secure leader draws strength from identity in Christ. Identity, your identity in Christ, my identity in Christ. This is not that I will have, you know, a title, I'm discipleship maker, I'm a leader. Yes, during this conference we have budget, but it's not about our names. I'm the speaker, I'm this, I'm this. I'm the daughter of God. I'm the child of God. I like to be like him, and my identity, it's him. Secure leader is also pure as a service to others. So this is a special way how we like to serve people with acceptance. And also we, if I can say in this way, we have an eye how to come closer to people, how to influence them how to help them to develop them, how they can grow. And the secure leader wants to add the value to others. To really to understand what is the people's need. How I can stand close to this person and really because I can see the potential which this person can have. Sometimes we, when we talk with people, and this is also often in my um, counseling practice, for people it's much easier to talk about failures, about this, what is weak in me. It's so difficult to say, I'm good in this. They are afraid, they are embarrassed, sometimes they don't know. But you as a disciple maker, you can see and you can somehow like 
take this and help to develop those gifts which those people have. But they are also area of our personal growth as disciple maker, the heart of integrity. And I would like just touch shortly these few things. Leadership or discipleship maker is function on the basis of trust. If we are working with people, if we are talking about discipleship, the most important is to build the trust. People have to trust you. I think this is a very common, I think one of the seminar, he, uh, seminar which we have here, it was about like 80% this is how we influence people, and only 20% this is what we are talking. So to disciple people, this is not only to share with our knowledge, but this is really just to be with people and also to build really the trust. I will say that without trust, we are not able to influence people, to develop them, because integrity, which is like next thing, integrity has the high value in influencing people. You know probably the situation that sometimes we are saying that people have two faces, yes? One face is for the ministry, and I'm full of love and encouragement for you, and I would like to bless you. And then when I'm alone in my room, I'm angry, you know, I'm tired, especially in different stressful situations, my character goes, my reaction. Being in the car and driver, yes? What are you doing? Where are you going? Did you see the lights? This is sometimes our true character. Being in a conflict situation, this is also our character. When someone just do something for me, so I will show you who am I. Integrity has a high value. So to build the trust, but my integrity life, this is what I'm saying, this is also this who am I. This is only one person, one Eva, one Jay, all your name. This is not a schizophrenic situation that one day I'm here, one day I'm here. Or maybe in this moment you will say that you have the depression. In Polish we said dwubiegunowa, like two. Yes, you, you know something about depression, that you can be sometimes very high and sometimes very deep. Yes. This is not a schizophrenic situation, what we are talking about. We are talking about integra integrity in our life. Our tendency to work, sometimes we have to work much harder for our image than for our integrity. And this is again something about us leaders, that if we are a little bit unfulfilled in the ministry, we have sometimes the tendency to say, I'm a leader, I can do this. So, so all the time we would like a little bit to promote ourselves. This is combination of security and really our value. My value is in Christ. And I like to work more for my integrity than for my image. Who am I? Did you have such situation that because of different situation, we like to look so well, we like to so impress, so even sometimes this what is really valuing important. We will say, oh, it, 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 it can wait, because now I like to feel well as a leader. Integrity means leaving the true myself before leading others. And this is also the sometimes schizophrenic situation in my life, or the lack of integrity. I think about integrity, we can have another separate subject. How to live 
the integrity life and also spiritual influence which we can have. Integrity, this is also a process. This is not a gift. And I think you remember also disciples, apostles, the same people being with Jesus. We can read this in, in Gospel of Mark. It was the moment when Jesus sent them already and they start to do wonderful things. And they are coming back and they just say, Jesus, you know what we have done? You know, demons, you know, everything. What people were just, different things happened. We were so successful. So they come as apostles. And then in the same chapter, a few verses later, they are again disciples. It is a late evening, a big crowd, and disciples are coming to Jesus. This is nothing to eat. So what we will do? Few minutes ago, they were able to do miracles. Few minutes later, they are hopeless. They are disciples. But I think this is okay. We, we ourselves, we have to also be apostles and disciples. Because as apostles we serve, but as disciples we received. And I think this is also to be humble. As a leaders in the ministry, doing the whole discipleship ministry, for one hand, yes, we are like apostles, but we have constantly to remember that we are also disciples. And we have to receive, we have to discover, we have to be close to Jesus, we have to ask, we have to just say, I need you, I don't know nothing. So this is a process. And the last point is that discipleship or leaders, they have to lead, live by a higher standard than followers. Sometimes we have a very high expectation about people, but be honest, we have to start by ourselves. This is how we sometimes teach our kids, do this, but you know the three fingers are here for me. Before I will expect, before I will judge, I have to think about me. Who am I? So just making sure this, uh, I will really emphasize us for, for a focus on our relationship with God and also to understand who we are, how we developed the relationship for us with God, how we understand who we are, and then we are able to build healthy relationship with discipleship. So this is not egoism. If first we will think how I'm connected with God, how I understand myself and my self-awareness, my security value, this is in Christ. And then I'm ready to build relationship with other people. And um, it was also mentioned yesterday that Paul, the, the wonderful, wonderful example for us, his character was changed so much. From the crazy man, he started to be like mother and father. And you know the verses, and maybe we'll not now go everything with the ties, but this is the wonderful combination when we are working with people, when we disciple people, that this is the spiritual parenting. We are coming to love, to be with them. But this is also time to confront. This is also time to say, stop, not anymore, because this is the role of the parents. And I love really this combination, mother and father. I don't like to say that women have only the mother's attitude and, and men's fathers, because I think like in God, and you know probably very well the picture of Rembrandt. Yes, the prodigal son when he's coming back and the father who is just have in arms his son. This is something very special about this picture. You know this probably. If not, so I will just remind 
this father here is a very interesting hands. Can you see a little bit the difference here? Female and man's hand. Yes, one hand is more small, the other is such big hands. This is also, of course, very symbolical, but this is also if we talk about this father, of the heavenly father. So in God, we have this both characteristic mother and father. So God is not just only father, God, but his character is also very female, if I can say in this way. And man, I hope that it is okay for you that I will say, yes, God's character is man and female, because this is the whole enrichment, the, this whole package which we have in God. He has this big heart for everyone and being a mother and father. And I think the, the last uh, moment, uh, how I would like also invite us to think how, the, how others' character can be transformed through the discipleship process. And this is again a huge, huge subject, and I think we will talk also more about this, but I will only try to mention, I'm, I hope that I can, I'm sorry, a little bit go here. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry, but if we think about this process of discipleship, we have very different people often. And this process is also very different. If you will have 10 people, so you will have 10 different actions, and you will have also 10 different ways how you will disciple people. We can have the one program, ideas, but because we like to be focused on a person, it will be a very different way. So sometimes you will be excited and you will see that the process is going just here. here, And this person is almost ready to be also the next generation disciple. Another time it will be a situation that you will have here. And this is like going to the medical doctor, cardiologist, and you know the heart is working. Dangerous, but this is very this is reality. If we 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 will talk together now about what is the people's reaction sometimes when we are leading them. So I think if I will ask you about your disappointment sometimes, this is because of this that you have you see the potential, you see the wonderful people, you you have the wonderful methods, but the process is ju -ju 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 -ju. And another process is like, yes, going in, in such, you know, very quiet person. So who has also, yes, here and back. This is what we would like to have. And now the, this, our intention is to think and to ask ourselves, do those people, if we like to transform them, do they see the God's character in us? Because we can have wonderful methods, we like to lead them, we like to influence them, but this is also their decision, what they will be doing. But this is how we can also a little bit like understand our own position is to think, do I am a person who really express the heart of God for them. And in this process, we like to be a right example, we like to be a right model, but as a parent, sometimes we are doing mistakes, and I would like to encourage you. Mistakes, this is also okay. Because if we are doing mistakes, it means that we are real that we are real people. If we'll be so perfect without any mistakes, so people, they will be even afraid to work with us, to be with us, because they will be also not honest to share about this, how they are struggling with something. So yes, we try to be a model. We try to be, that they will be like likeness, but not of us, but of Christ. And I think the most important things for, for the end, we like, 
really to have this spiritual influence in people's life. And in this day, I will say that the, the most, the best way how people are following us, this is through listening, watching, and imitating. Be real. And yourself, you have to be focused on Christ. If people, they will see this in us, they will be, they will be open for this, that they would like to start the whole discipleship process. About methods, about plan, about how to do it, we'll do in the next day. But today it was just to think and to remember that we are called to be like a likeness of Christ. People will see God, I'm sorry, but through you. Yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we are broken. But having this new identity in Christ, we like to be and we like that our life is so transparent, so true, so inspiring also, that they would like to say, I like to follow Christ with this person because she's able or he's able to help me. And again, doing mistakes, we have to remember that God is the God who is truth. And in each moment, even if we will be down, he will take this again for good. And also through mistakes, he can do wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And probably this is also your testimony that through mistakes, God show you something. God teach you something. You discovered something about God. Until Christ is formed in me. This is my prayer. And this is like my inspiration also to be focused in this ministry, in discipleship. Not only to think about program, goal, method. Yes, this is important, the skills. But this is my prayer, that people, when they will be looking at you, that they will spend time with you, they will be in love in Jesus. Because through you, they will be able to see something more. So, he who began a good work in you will carry it and com come to the com oh, I'm sorry. Yes, my English is in this moment limited. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So, this is the prayer and also encouragement, I hope, for you.